Hi, this is Jared from Yellowwood Guiding, and in this video, we're going to talk about f-stop. Setting your f-stop is one of the most important things on getting the pictures you want to get. F-stop, aperture, depth of field, those are all the same words that we use for the same idea. It's what's going to be in focus near to far. <clears throat> so, look at this video here. As we change the f-stop through this shot, I focused on the bush. Your focus won't change, but what looks like to be in focus behind that or in front of that will change based off your f-stop. There's a low f-stop. You can see the mountains blurred. As we start increasing it again, you can see how the mountains come into focus. And then we'll start going back down the other way. So to get through this process, you want to think about what do you want to have in focus. In a landscape shot like this, you'd like the mountains to be in focus. But here, if maybe you're just focusing on the bush, you'd want a low f-stop like this. And now the bush is in focus and the mountains are blurred. So think about that. And that's going to help you pick the right f-stop for your shot. So as we think about depth of field, this is a, a topic that a lot of people don't understand very well. This is depth of field. You can see how just right around that 10 inch mark, right where I focused the macro lens, that's only what's in focus because we used a very shallow depth of field, f2.8. And as we look at this video, I'm going to start increasing the f-stop on this ruler. And you can watch how the depth of field, where it's in focus, before and after that 10 inch mark starts to increase. So as you start going up, it slowly starts to expand. This is the idea of depth of field. People ask me all the time, how do I get the background to blur? And it's very, very simple. Use a low f-stop. If you want the background to be in focus, use a medium high or even potentially a really high f-stop. So look as this f-stop starts going up. Now around f18, all the way up to f22, the maximum. From eight inches all the way to 13, we can see extremely clearly but beyond that, it starts to lose its sharpness. So as you start coming back down, our depth of field is shrinking. So this is really important. This is a great way to be artistic, make someone look just at one part of your picture, or to let somebody see everything in your picture, determining, depending on what you want to have in focus. So you're going to set your f-stop. So let's go through the process of setting the right f-stop, getting what you want to have. So when you think about it, you know, we want to shoot our shots based on what you see. In a landscape shot, you generally want to have everything in focus near to far. So here this tree looks to be about a good distance away. And what you got to think about first is how far away is it? So you think to yourself, hopefully you can judge distance pretty well. But if you look, there's the camera and there's the tree 75 feet away or so. So then you want to determine how much are you zoomed in on that composition. So if you composed into that tree, like right there, that the lens is at 35 millimeters, and we're setting up the shot. So here is a nice trick on Nikons. You can look at what your picture was, 58 millimeters, and then I use this really handy dandy app. It's called DOF Master. If you get a smartphone, I highly recommend it. You dial in your camera, you dial in the focal length that you're using, and then you guess on the f-stop. So here, if we just guess that f5.6 might work here, with some experience we'll know that that should get us everything we need. And if you hit the HD button right there, it'll say that if we focused, we'll have 32 feet to infinity in focus if we focus at 62 feet. And that tree is just about 60 to 70 feet away, so everything's in focus at that f-stop. So here's a shot at f2.8, pretty blurry, that's the wrong setting. So let's see how you get the right settings in a shot like this. So there's our camera. If you look from the side, our camera is about three feet away from that rock. So we'd like to get everything from three feet to infinity in focus. So how do you figure out that number that's gonna change? So the best thing is break out the app. What it said is that F, uh, F13 at 26 millimeters, everything from just before three feet to infinity would be in focus if we focus at about five and a half feet. So here, if you extrapolate out, you use that app, you can actually see if you zoomed in to maybe the bushes out there and got the mountains in the background, you'd only need to use F5.6. But if you wanted to use a few rocks like that middle rock, you'd have to use F8. But where we're using that first rock, we need F13 to get everything in focus. And that's going to change based off the length of the lens you have as well as the camera. And that's why I highly recommend using that app to tell you exactly what settings to use because then there's no guessing. There's no having to adjust. So here we go. We're going to adjust our f-stop up to f13. We know we should get everything in focus from the tip of that rock in front all the way to the mountains in the back. And here's our shot. And looks pretty good. But I have a better way to convince you that this is the right setting. So we're actually going to zoom in on this picture and sort of travel through. So check that out. There's that grass right in the bottom. Definitely sharp. We move up about 8, 10 feet out. Still sharp because we use the right f-stop. Those bushes 15, 20 feet out 
also sharp. And if you go all the way to the background, this is the key. The area way in the distance is sharp. Look at those mountains. We get nice detail because we selected the right f-stop. So for landscapes, you're going to shoot on lower f or middle f-stops between 8 to 15 or 8 to 16. So take a look. Here's f2.8. The background is blurry. Here's f13, though. Background sharp. So let's go through the same steps. What's the closest thing in your picture? It's going to be about 14 feet away in this shot, the stream bank. So we dial in. We need to get 14 feet to infinity. So the, we're shooting at 40 millimeters. And let's just look at 5.6. What did that give us? So we deleted out. No, nope, fix that there. All right. So we got 5.6. What that says is 23 feet to infinity will be in focus if we focused at 46 feet away. That's not enough. We need to go higher. So let's try F9. So we dial in F9 and delete out our focus distance because we want the camera to tell us where to where to focus so if we focus from 14 feet to infinity we'll be in focus if we use f9 and exactly what we did right there f9 we got a nice sharp shot so in wildlife action people sports we're trying to get a fast shutter speed so we use a low f-stop here on this setup f6.7 was the lowest we could use because i was using a very long lens about 850 millimeters so when you're looking at your settings, a lot of people think, I'll just adjust my brightness. That's going to slow or speed up my shutter speed. That just makes your pictures brighter or darker. That doesn't solve your problem. And then if you change your f-stop, if you're too high on your f-stop, your shutter speed will also go too slow. So you got to think about that and set your f-stop based off of what you're doing. Wildlife action, people, sports, you want a low f-stop. You can see how you get a faster shutter speed there. So take a look at depth of field on that landscape or that wildlife shot we took. I was almost 800 millimeters. The f-stop was 6.7. If you delete out the distance, the camera said to get everything in focus, you'd have to focus at 10,000 feet. That's almost two miles away. So that's not what we want to see. We need to tell this program where we're focusing. So just for giggles, let's try 70 feet. For a lens like that, that would be a really close shot. The animal would be really close. So let's dial in 70 feet and let's see what our depth of field is. What would be in focus? And what that tells us is if we focused at 70 feet, only a foot of our distance of our picture would be in focus from near to far wherever we put our focus point that elk if we take a look at the elk that elk was about a hundred feet away so we dial that in we focused at a hundred feet and our depth of field is almost two feet still that's a really good way to get a nice blurry background exactly like you see in the picture so you can use your f-stop to create nice effects if you want to create a slow shutter speed, you have a high f-stop. For waterfalls or streams, you increase your f-stop. So f-stop reflects your shutter speed. Here in aperture mode, every three clicks as the aperture goes up, our shutter speed goes in half. So we, as we keep on going, you can see as it goes up, f22, we get 1.6 seconds. But if we change our ISO, that was ISO 400, if we go down that increases our shutter speed even longer, makes it all the way up to six seconds, would be perfect for a waterfall. So for waterfalls or moving water, you want a really slow shutter speed, so a high f-stop, as well as a medium low or really low ISO. And the end result is you get nice blurry water. So you want to think about what you're shooting. If you're shooting wildlife, you want a blurry background and a sharp animal, low f-stop. If you're shooting landscapes, you want a medium high f-stop. Determine what's close and what's far. Break out that app and determine what's the right f-stop for you to use. And hopefully you can take some great shots.